Good evening and welcome to today's meeting of the Commonwealth Club of California, the place where you're in the know. I'm Skip Rhodes, past chair of the Commonwealth Club's Board of Governors and your chair for today's program. Please now make sure that all cell phones, PDAs, and other noise-making devices are turned off. And I did not turn mine off, so I will do that now. We'll get underway in just a minute, but first I'd like to tell you about some upcoming programs. Next Wednesday, March 20th, Jennifer Granholm, former Michigan governor and host for Al Gore's Current TV, will discuss the political landscape. This will be a noon program here at the Commonwealth Club in San Francisco. And on Thursday, March 22nd, Dr. Lori Santos, professor and director of Yale University's Comparative Cognition Laboratory, who is also known as the Monkey Whisperer, will discuss what the behavior of monkeys reveals about human behavior when it comes to decision making. This will be a 6 p.m. program also here at the club in San Francisco. For more information on all of our upcoming programs, please visit commonwealthclub.org. It is my pleasure to extend a special welcome to any new Commonwealth Club members that are here this evening. Do we have any new members? If you do, please raise your hand. Okay, we're all old timers then, good. If you're not yet a member, today is a great time to join. Before we begin the program, I'm also pleased to let you know that our moderator, for tonight's audience question period will be Abraham Sofer, George P. Schultz Distinguished Scholar and Senior Fellow at the Hoover Institution and a noted authority on international law. Professor Sofer also teaches transnational law at Stanford Law School. He previously, previously served as legal advisor to the State Department under President Reagan and as U.S. District Judge in New York. Now on to the program. There are question cards on your seats. Please write down any questions you have for Professor Yu, and those, of course, will be collected during the program. We also want to remind you that copies of Professor Yu's book, Taming Globalization, are on sale in the lobby, and he will be pleased to sign them in this room immediately following the program. <laughs> The Commonwealth Club is a nonpartisan organization, and we do ask that our speakers be allowed to make their remarks without interruption. We, of course, encourage you to write and submit questions. I will now pause for one moment and then begin the program for our radio, television, and internet audiences. Good evening, and welcome to tonight's meeting of the Commonwealth Club of California the place where you're in the know. You can find us on the internet at commonwealthclub.org. I'm Skip Rhodes, past chair of the Commonwealth Club's Board of Directors and your chair for today's program. And I'm now pleased to introduce today's speaker. He's a law professor at the University of California at Berkeley and co-author of the new book, Taming Globalization, International Law, the U.S. Constitution, and the New World Order. During the administration of President George W. Bush from 2001 to 2003, our speaker served as a Deputy Assistant Attorney General in the Office of Legal Counsel at the U.S. Department of Justice, where he worked on issues involving foreign affairs, national security, and the separation of powers. During this time, he wrote the administration's first decisions on prisoner detention, habeas corpus, military commissions, and the Geneva Conventions. He received much attention for writing controversial memos on the treatment of prisoners. He also previously served as general counsel of the U.S. Senate Judiciary Committee from 1995 to 1996. He originally joined the Bolt Hall faculty at UC Berkeley in 1993 and then clerk for Justice Clarence Thomas of the U.S. Supreme Court. Our speaker has received research fellowships from UC Berkeley, the Olin Foundation, and the Rockefeller Foundation, and is a visiting scholar at the American Enterprise Institute. In addition to his latest book, Taming Globalization, he is the author of 
the powers of price and peace, the Constitution and foreign affairs after 9-11, war by other means, an insider's account of the war on terror, and crisis and command, the history of executive power from George Washington to George W. Bush. He also received his JD from Yale Law School and his BA in American History from Harvard University. Please give a generous Commonwealth Club welcome to Professor John Yu. I'd like to thank the Commonwealth Club for asking me to return to speak about taming globalization. I was last here two years ago, I believe, to speak about crisis in command, and I had a uh, wonderful time then. I'm glad to be back uh, again. I'm also uh, very honored that uh, the Commonwealth Club invited, uh, I call him Judge Abraham Sofayer, to uh, moderate question and comment on the book. I couldn't imagine a more qualified and acute commentator. Uh, I don't know whether he'll agree with anything or some of it or much of it, but I really look forward to his comments and questions. It's a great honor, actually, to have someone with his uh, combination of academic experience. He was also a judge, and he was also a legal advisor at the State Department. So um, every job I've ever had in my career, he did me several levels better, in fact. So I look forward to his comments and questions. I also would be remiss if I uh, didn't mention my co-author, who's not here, Julian Ku, who's a professor at Hofstra Law School. And the uh, origins of the book are that Julian and I actually went to a conference together, and just by chance we gave papers that ex said almost exactly the same thing, uh, just by chance, and that became the genesis for this book. Um, so let me uh, just briefly describe a case of Medellin versus Texas and uh, explain how that it to me encapsulates a lot of the issues uh, in taming globalization. Now, Medellin versus Texas is a case of a Mexican national who crossed the border and committed murder, a capital murder, and was sentenced to death by the state court in Texas, state courts of Texas. He was not, however, given his uh, warnings under the Vienna Conventions, which require that when an alien is arrested in the United States, he be given warnings that he can uh, seek access to his consulate, that he can get assistance from translators, and so on. Uh, Texas refused uh, to reconsider its decision, even though it had not provided these warnings as required by a treaty. The, uh, state, the country of Mexico went to the International Court of Justice to seek relief, saying that the United States had violated its treaty obligations. The International Court of Justice found against the United States and said we, the United States had in fact violated our obligations under the treaty and issued an order to the United States to uh, halt the execution of Mr. Medellin and the uh, other aliens on death row in the United States who also were in the same situation. President Bush uh, issued an order to the governor of Texas. Um, I trust he knew the address to put on the letter. Uh, President Bush issued an order to uh, Governor Rick Perry asking him, effectively ordering him to stop the execution so that the United States could comp come into compliance with the Vienna Convention and the International Court of Justice's decision. Uh, Texas refused to obey it and actually uh, was sued in the Supreme Court. And ultimately, the US Supreme Court refused to stop the execution. Uh, Mr. Medellin was executed there shortly thereafter. Uh, and in that decision, the Supreme Court said that even though the United States had signed uh, the Vienna Convention that required these kinds of warnings, that Congress still had yet to do something. Congress had to act to put it into effect. And until Congress did that, the courts were not going to get into the business of enforcing the treaty, even in a death penalty case when someone was right, on uh, death row. In, in many ways, that, in, that one case, and it's very complicated, but that one case summarizes a lot of the issues in this book. The first is that globalization, although we use the phrase a lot, um, has caused a lot of changes in our political and legal system. And when we say globalization, we mean the, a few things. One is the uh, easy and rapid 
and cheap movement of goods.